And I, and I think it's um, pretty true to say um, that when it comes to reading the Scriptures, you got to sometimes read between, between the lines. And as I've said to you many, many times before, that we're so f familiar with some of the excerpts from, from the Gospels because we hear them, maybe we've been coming to Mass most of our lives, that we, we don't really hear or kind of maybe ask, well, what does that really mean? And so I say, I say that this, this morning um, because um, if we go back for a moment to uh, the Acts of the uh, Apostles, um, that the same person who wrote uh, the Gospel according to Luke, Luke also wrote the Acts of the Apostles. And he's kind of telling people off um, that they uh, don't understand what is being, being said. And, he's, and, he's, and he says to them a very important phrase, now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance. He's talking about the fact that they didn't accept Jesus when he, when he came. And he's not, he's not blaming them. He's saying, well, you did it out, out of ignorance. And you remember, as Christ was dying on the cross, and they were nailing him to the cross, what did he say? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. How does that apply to our lives? Well, most often, when you or I commit sin, we do it out of ignorance. We don't really understand what we're d doing, uh, you know. And that's why I think it's very, very true to say that most people, and I would particularly mean every one of you here at Mass in particular, um, I think most of you, and I think myself, I would be incapable of committing a mortal sin. Because I don't, I, I, because of ignorance and not understanding what I'm doing. A mortal sin would be total rejection of God and everything that he stood for. And I don't think any of us here this morning would ever do, do, do that. Um, we might, you know, at times commit a serious sin, like really hurting somebody or taking, taking somebody's good name away or spreading uh, false rumors about some, somebody. But, you know, we don't always fully appreciate or understand what we're doing. And then we move, move on to, to the gospel uh, very briefly. And again, we always actually saw the resurrection as just about Jesus. Whereas it's not just about Jesus. It's very much about each and every one, one of us. And I go back to Holy Week and... Um, and if you think of, try and now picture Jesus as a human being, human being just like you or I. And as Jesus had an idea of what was going to happen to him, and he knew the writing was on the wall, and he knew that his life was about to be ended, we're told he sweated drops of blood when he thought about that. He was worried. He was terrified. So apply that to ourselves. Suppose you get very bad, bad news. 
either concerning yourself or concerning somebody uh, that you really love. How do you feel? You feel absolutely terrified. You're traumatized. Maybe you don't know what to do. But then the thing about Jesus was, and this is where an important part of the resurrection and the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus, he made an act of trust in God. He made, he surrendered to God. He made an act of trust in God. And how do I apply that in my life? Well, just like you, life is never smooth. We all encounter difficulties in life. We all meet obstacles. We all meet suffering of one kind or another. And so, just like Jesus, the important question is not, is Jesus God? Jesus was totally human. But more important to ask, is God for me? And can God be trusted? And the answer is yes, yes. Because God is turning all our crucifixions into life. That's very important to remember. It's interesting that in the last, uh, I'm not sure which day uh, last week, but last week, as we were dealing with different stories about the resurrection in, in the Gospels and in the readings at Mass, the parable of Jesus uh, feeding the 5,000 came up. And I think that, that was very interesting. It didn't happen by chance. And I love that par parable, but the most important part is not that Jesus could feed 5,000 with a few loaves or fishes. But I think the most important part of that parable was what Jesus said to the disciples when everyone had their, had their fill. Pick up the fragments left over. Don't let anything go to waste. Don't let anything go to waste. And so, all the things that happen in our lives, whether they be good or bad or indifferent, are all part of God's beautiful plan. And so, I have learned, and I practice in my own life, that whatever comes my way, good, bad, or indifferent, I try and see it as part of God's plan for me. And I, and I say to God in my own words, well, Lord, I don't really understand what is happening at the moment, but I know that you have something in this for me. And he always has. It always, he always has. It can be, in many instances, a transforming moment in your lives. When you begin to see things totally, totally differently. And so, instead of fighting against those things, I thank God for them. I, I, don't, I don't just resign myself, because God, that's not what God wants. Okay got to be resigned. No. Well, Lord, you know what you're doing, and thank you. And I know you have something in this for me. And if you practice that in your own life, whenever things go wrong, things don't go according to plan, your world is turned upside side down, stop. Stop and just say, I don't know, Lord. I don't understand. But 
I know you have something in this for me. Maybe, and almost always, I don't see it at the moment, but as time goes, goes on, I will. And surely, surely, there must be things that happened in your life that at the time seemed, you know, absolutely incomprehensible. But later on, when you looked back, you were able to say, ah, now I know. Now I know. And but for that, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Now, I've had many times like that in my life, and I'm sure you've had also. So, everything, everything, everything. God is in everything, in the minutest details, and everything is all part of God's beautiful plan.